Welcome to 10 Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. I'm Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. This show features questions from the Personality Hacker community that we answer in about 10 minutes. We've been using personality types in our coaching for years, and we'd love to answer your questions about personal growth through the lens of type. You can find out more about us at personalityhacker.com. Okay, now let's hear today's question. Hey, Antonio and Joel, this is Denzel. I'm an ENFJ. And my question is, I often hear or read online that ENFJs are the most sensing of all the intuitives. So would that mean that we are also the least intuitive? And if so, is that a good thing or a neutral thing or a bad thing? And how would we work on that? Thanks, Denzel, for the question. Are ENFJs the most sensor-like of all the intuitive types? And if so, does it follow that they're the least intuitive of all the intuitive types? Well, first, let's address why you might have read in different sources online that ENFJs are the most sensory of the intuitive types. Because I don't know if I agree with it, but I can understand why somebody might make that assertion. So if you look at this cognitively, not based on the four letters, but the cognitive functions that live underneath those personality types, there are eight intuitive types, and four of them are going to cognitively lead with intuition, an intuitive function, and the other four are going to use their intuition or have a cognitive function of intuition as their second or auxiliary or what we call the co-pilot. And so already people who lead with intuition are going to feel like they're quote unquote more intuitive than the people who are using it as an auxiliary or second function. So ENFJs fall into that latter category. They're a personality type that uses intuition or their intuitive preference or function as an auxiliary or second position. But they're not the only intuitive types that do that. ENTJs would also fit in that category, INTPs and INFPs. So there's going to be four types that have intuition as an auxiliary or second function. Already, those four types are going to feel, quote unquote, less intuitive than the four types that lead with intuition. If you're following along in the car model, that's the co-pilot position for those types. Right. Versus the driver function, right? ENFPs, ENTPs, INTJs, and INFJs all have their intuitive function as the driver. And ENFJs, again, ENFJs, ENTJs, INFPs, and INTPs are going to have it as their co-pilot or auxiliary. So... Now you have a distinction between those that use it as a support function as opposed to as a dominant or like basically the main way that they interact or engage with the world. So now let's just take ENFJs in the context of those four types that have it as an auxiliary co-pilot or secondary function. Are ENFJs more sensory than those other three types? And I wouldn't say that they necessarily are. You know, it's you're going to have a sensory function as your third or tertiary or what we call the 10 year old for all four of those types. And so are are any of them more sensory than any of the others? Intrinsically, I would say no. Now, with an ENFJ, there might be a couple of reasons why it appears to be that way, regardless of whether or not it's true. And I would say, first of all, ENFJs and ENTJs. Their sensory, that third function, that sensory, is going to be extroverted sensing, right? So we call it sensation. And that means it's going to be pointed to the outside world. It means it's going to be a little bit more obvious to others because it is extroverted. It's engaging with the outside world and other people can observe it. In the car model, this is the 10-year-old position. Right. So that might make it so that the sensory aspect of an ENJ that sensory aspect might be a little bit more obvious because it's going to be something that's pointed to the outside world. It's going to be something that is more engaged with. So are ENFJs any more sensory than ENTJs because they have the same cognitive preference, right? They also have extroverted sensing or sensation as that 10-year-old or tertiary. So what would make ENFJs more sensory than ENTJs? I would argue nothing. But I would say that an ENFJ is leading with extroverted feeling or harmony. And that's a function that is pretty good at figuring out how to fit into the social ecosystem. So if an ENFJ is in a situation where there's a lot of sensory expectations, like the culture has a lot of sensory expectations and values, and that's how you get validation, an ENFJ is going to be better at blending than maybe an ENTJ will be. 
they're going, they're going to do a better job of playing a social game that makes them appear as if they're not as much odd man out because they're going to know all the rules. They're going to just instinctively pick all of those up. So if an ENFJ is considered, quote unquote, more sensory, it might be actually that they're just better at blending. They're better at blending into other people around them, which makes them appear to be like those people. And if those people have mostly sensory preferences, then that is going to make the ENFJ appear, quote unquote, more sensory. I think what I would do right now is just pause and let that sink in for a second. The fact that when when we read stuff online and we start to see people say, oh, this type is like this, they're the most of this or the most of this other thing or the least of this thing. I think at this moment, just from hearing what Antonia just described, you can already start to see, oh, people are way oversimplifying this. They're stereotyping it, oversimplifying it. Usually the thinking that results in somebody saying that isn't very sophisticated thinking. They're not actually thinking through all the things that Antonia just mentioned in the last few minutes. So I just want us to pause for a moment and realize that anytime you hear all nothing, mostly like be very suspicious of that because this system is much more complex than most people online would report it is. Yeah, there are certain characteristics and qualities that people of a certain type share. But the easiest way to pare it down to something that's accurate is to look at it on a cognitive level and go, what is the nucleus of these functions? And what is the nucleus of how this type is using these functions, as opposed to assigning personality traits or characteristics to all of, you know, everybody who shares those preferences. And I just also want to mention really quick that if you're like, wait, that really overwhelms me. I'm just new to type. I'm listening. Cognitive, that's what? Well, that's what we do here at Personality Hacker. We help you understand that in an easy, digestible way. So hang with us and other recordings, other programs we have, that's what they're designed to do is to help make that real for you in your life. Hmm. Okay. So let's now ask answer the question of is this good, bad, neutral, and how do you work with that? So there's a there's evidence to indicate that before the age of 25, the the characteristic or the the other element of a person's demographic that influences type the most or how it's going to show up is their gender. But then after the age of 25, it's their career choice. So the choices that people make in their life, including things like how they're going to spend eight hours a day, you know, eight plus hours a day for 40 hours a week, those are things that are going to highly influence how a person's development pans out basically. And so if a person, if it like say, take for example, an ENFJ has put themselves in a context, maybe say a career where it pulls on their intuition a lot. It's really required for that career. Maybe they go into some form of psychology or maybe they are in a very creative you know, performance capacity, something that really requires them to do a lot of future pacing and really be in that function. That ENFJ is not going to be the quote unquote most sensory of, of the types. They're going to have very much developed that auxiliary or co-pilot function of introverted intuition or perspectives. And that's going to make them feel like a very intuitive style of person. That said, if they go into something that pulls on their sensory component, that 10-year-old or tertiary function, a lot more, then that's probably going to be more of a highlight of how their personality shows up. Because personality traits is not the same thing as personality type. And traits come from things like our experiences and what is required for us to develop. So it's going to be more about the person's developmental path. Is it good, bad, neutral? I'd argue it's neutral. The choices that people make in their careers and the kinds of tools that they need to pull on are the things that they they chose as an individual, not as a personality type. And so those things are very much neutral. That said, everybody can benefit from developing their auxiliary or co-pilot function more. And so the key to an ENFJ not being the you know sensory in a way that messes them up, like take, for example, somebody who might be finding themselves in a cognitive loop between their driver and their 10-year-old, right? That dominant tertiary function loop. If they find themselves in a loop, well, that's no good, right? Because that means that they're ignoring and neglecting the wisdom of that co-pilot or auxiliary. So that wouldn't be a neutral. That would be a bad. That said, if a person is pulling on that 10-year-old or tertiary function of extroverted sensing or sensation on a regular basis because it's conducive to the life they've built for themselves, then that's good. They want to pull on that function. 
as long as they're making sure it's always in service to that co-pilot or auxiliary function of intuition. And of course, developing your intuition, making sure that you're giving it plenty of space. For an ENFJ, that might be things like ensuring that you get 20 to 30 minutes of sensory deprivation every day, making sure that you are going inside internally and you know observing the patterns that your mind is making, observing how things are working in relationships you know, with yourself and other people, observing how other people's relationships pan out, making sure that you're tapping into that ability to sort of understand implications and meaning and long-term consequences and that you have meaning in your own life. Maybe keeping a dream journal as an example, something like that. Right, exactly. Those kinds of things will help an ENFJ tap into the intuitive part of themselves. So even if they're leaning heavily on that 10-year-old or tertiary, it's never going to be a cost. It's going to be a benefit because it's always in service to that co-pilot or auxiliary. And that's the key for everybody. Everybody who wants to be balanced needs to make sure that they have a good routine of exercise to tap into that co-pilot or auxiliary function, regardless of what their personality type is. Thanks, Denzel, for the question. You can ask your own question about personality types or personal growth. Visit personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. We also have programs designed to help you with your personal growth through the lens of personality types. Again, visit personalityhacker.com and find the program that's made just for you. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. Thank you for listening to 10-Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. We'll talk with you on the next episode. If you're focused on personal growth, I think you'll resonate with our core content over at personalityhacker.com. We want to see you understand how your mind is wired so you can generate motivation, improve social skills, find career opportunities, and master excellent decision making. But a quick warning, we are advice and action focused in all of our articles, podcasts, and videos. This means that we attract people who like to be challenged to become excellent, to take action, to put in the work to optimize themselves, not simply just gather more information. If you are committed to personal growth and ready to radically find your inner truth, then come over and be a part of our growing community of like minds at Personality Hacker.